you too. We here with another one. We back, man. We got the top 10 things the government hiding from us. Let's get into this ASAP. You feel me? Make sure y'all subscribe if you didn't. Um, spam free moolah in the comments. Hashtag free moolah. Free bro, you feel me? Gonna be home real soon. Let's let's run this up for him. We holding it out. Let, let's get it. You feel me? Without further ado. Number 10, secret app. At one point or another, we all got the secret vault app on our phones. You know, the one that's designed to look like another app, like a calculator or something like that. It's in case anybody goes through your phone. You can hide your memes or MSN passwords or nudies, whatever you want, all in this app. It just says vault on it too. You're like, okay, well, this is obviously the one. But how secure is that app to begin with? Who's making that? Who's on the other end? Back in both. Number nine, Governor Rod Blagojevich. Oh, Back in October 2008, an FBI investigation Rocky. towards Governor Rod Blagojevich had began. It all began when one of the governor's associates tipped off the FBI that Rod was promising official favors in exchange of campaign or personal funds. Yeah, that's a no-go in the world of an Illinois governor. You can't do that. So the FBI tapped his office and started recording his phone calls. They recorded him for seven weeks, and after that point, they had more than enough evidence to arrest him come December 2008. Of course, he was also impeached. Recordings didn't sound great as well there was lots of profanity lots of talk about this new job as governor and all these bribes that he could now maintain in the future rob blagojevic was convicted of 18 counts of felony corruption by time 2011 rolled around including soliciting bribes <laughs> attempted extortion wire fraud just a plethora of horrible stuff he was sentenced to 14 years in federal prison and on top of that he had to pay fines of up to twenty one thousand dollars number eight Nixon's wiretaps. It wouldn't be shocking if you've heard of the Nixon Watergate hotel scandal. It's pretty massive, history wise. But if you forget, the Watergate scandal was what led to Nixon resigning in 1974. Back in June 1972, numerous burglars were caught attempting to break into the offices of the Democratic National Committee at the Watergate Hotel in Washington. They were breaking in with the intent to plant bugs. Little mics, not bugs. Although that would be horrible too. There's a bunch of bugs around. Like, realize and ants come from. Several people involved were connected to Nixon's re-election committee. Nixon denied as best as he could, obviously, reminding us that he is not a crook. Famous, not a crook line. Although we had over 3,500 hours of secretly recorded conversation. Now, there's one 18-minute gap in these tapes. That's what's so compelling still to this day. Maybe he was farting that entire time. You never know. Number seven, Mayor Marion Barry. When the FBI secretly records you, be it video, audio, whatever the case, you're gonna be pretty upset when you eventually find out. No, I would, I would assume. I'd be upset. Nixon had all of our phone calls saved, I'd be like, why? What? I was ranting. These were his personal. This is private. Back in 1990, the late Marion Barry, who was once mayor of Washington, was being recorded by the FBI and D.C. police while he was in his hotel room, taking part in some illegal narcotics and such with a friend. Barry went to prison after this was all a big setup. But that still didn't stop him from becoming mayor again once he was released. So you can go to jail, do all the stuff, and bad things happen. Get set up. Oh, shit. I heard about that, that shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what'd you say? Said I heard about that that story. Bro. Hey yo, bruh, bruh, wild out, yo, bruh, come on, bro, you can't, you can't get, you can't finally get our people in that office. You get caught they up. They set him up. Oh, they but, set him up. But then again, like he still like. All right, he look, didn't, though, like it's not like you can't do what you do mm -hmm. on your private time as long as you get what you got to do done every day. It shouldn't be a problem. You feel me? He handled his handle every day. They wanted to get in his free, his private time. Got what they wanted. But salute to my man for getting the job right back. Like, nothing yes. happened, bro. That's big W. Big W mm -hmm. on, well, we, Black History Month done, but big W. We don't even celebrate Black History Month. Right. Because we, we celebrate it every day. Facts, facts. Friend, and then come back and still be a mayor. R.I.P. Number six, Lance Armstrong's phone calls. Not to be confused with Neil Armstrong, although this next one is truly out of this world. I had to. Lance Armstrong, Lance won the Tour de France seven times from 1999 to 2005. Impressive, 1,000%. I can't even imagine. My legs get tired walking up a hill, let alone cycling this fast and far. Oh my God. It's more than likely you've heard about some happenings with Lance, some scandals and such. In July 2004, Greg LeMond, also a Tour de France winner, he secretly recorded himself having a conversation with Stephanie McIlvain. Stephanie overheard a conversation previously where Lance was in the hospital being treated for testicular cancer. She admitted on the phone that this is what she she heard. Lance admitted to using steroids to a doctor that day. Now this is pretty meta because this is like a confession of something that was overheard in a phone call. It's a literally broken telephone at this point. And
And Armstrong insisted this conversation with medical staff never happened to begin with. But come October 2012, the anti-doping agency confirmed Armstrong had been using throughout his career. The Tour de France since stripped him of all of his titles. Number five, Hoover and JFK. This one goes pretty deep. Officials tapping officials. Back in the 60s, there was a file you would probably go to jail for for trying to even see for yourself. Just by doing that, they'd be like, yep, you're going. See ya. Go wash your eyes. This file was the FBI's official and confidential file. It was kept in the office of J. Edgar Hoover. And inside, it was just a plethora of secrets. I'm talking about senators doing sketchy stuff. But one file showed that Hoover was taping phone calls with JFK. Hoover had enough dirt on everybody. That was his whole plan. And what he knew about JFK was that he was having an affair with a 25-year-old named Judith Campbell Exner, who at the time was also seeing mob boss Sam Giancana. So it's like a love triangle. Why, why he had the heat, though? Like, why you want him, bruh? Out of everything you had to tell, that? Could I let Niggas my man... Yeah, you gonna let dick my... Rotten. Couldn't let my man's like, damn, bruh. Nigga, he president, bruh. What you mean? She can, she can cheat with the president, bruh. That's the president, bro. Feel me? I ain't. All right, bruh. Like, come on, bruh. Shouldn't be in his business, though. Like, really. Unless a nigga want his spot. That's why. Facts. Nigga, Straight. Man, niggas just be hating. She nigga crazy. want your spot. For anything, so any little thing, little dirty <laughs> shit. Record the phone call. Yeah, I'm recording this thing. Probably oh, had some people follow the girl. Come on, like, man. yeah, shit like that be going on today. Facts. It's sad, bro. That's this just sad. Much a spot. Shit, crazy, man. Y'all gotta I stop, man. Right. The world, the world need to be a better place, bro. Y'all <laughs> gotta stop, bro. Real talk. Shit is wild, of, like, man. why we shouldn't be doing this at all. In March 1962, Hoover told Kennedy over brunch that the FBI had tapes on him. And, of course, this affair. Odd that JFK didn't fire him until his death in 1972. That's a pretty... But, like, what is the police going to do? Like, he supposed to go to jail? Because he... What the fuck? Because I guess, like, <clears throat> once you marry, like... It's a crime? It's a crime. It's a crime. It's, it's really a crime. When to... you're the president, you got to, like, man... Just... Bruh, he can't be the side nigga. The president can't be the. Come on, y'all. Come on, man. Po a lot. Bruh, I bet you some FBI officers is the side nigga. I bet you, bruh. Come on, bruh. Like, niggas That's crazy. A thing. That's a loaded threat. Hoover, right there, Hoover. Look at Hoover, bruh. Hoover ain't getting no <laughs> ass, bruh. Bags. No ass. Look at this, man. He look like a fucking mask, bro. He look like that shit, bruh. I don't even know what it's called, my nigga. You like that mask. That ain't fully a mask, bro. You like his face peeled off. Like, you could peel that little part off. Pillsbury like. dope boy. Facts, bro. Like, okay, I see that, and I'm not going to touch it. Enjoy your mimosa. I'm not going to do anything about this. Have fun. Just one bill, please. Number four, Linda Tripp. This next one is a real trip. That's uh, I like throwing puns in. I had to. Back in 1998, Pentagon employee Linda Tripp would have phone calls with Monica Lewinsky, who, of course, was involved in a scandal with President Clinton. There's some things that happened there. So these conversations were probably pretty juicy, for lack of a better term. Lewinsky even caught on to these recordings at one point while they were happening, and she asked Linda on the other side what this double clicking noise is that she kept hearing she's like what's going on why is there clicking are you chewing gum trip lied to her she was like yep yeah, i am chewing gum for sure i'm just that's it definitely not me Whoop. recording something meanwhile trip was indeed secretly recording tapes that led to clinton being impeached the charges against trip for illegally recording were dropped snitches get off the hook apparently that's wild number three ralph Berger. sometimes you get caught it's deeper than that shit like nigga got impeached that's Cause tough. he, man, it's deeper, bro. Like the leech is crazy, but we ain't gonna get him that. The city has your back, and then you almost get away with it. It's shady and scary, and all lies. But that's how it works, especially if you're Ralph Berger. This attorney was under investigation, and he was suspected of bribing public officials. The so the fuck? police. Who the fuck pull up bumping like that? What the fuck is that? Oh, I thought that was music. Yeah, That's bro. the engine. I was, yo. I'm high, y'all. I'm high. But what, bruh, that shit sound crazy. Y'all, bruh. Come on, bruh. Go fix that shit, bruh. Put some oil or something, my nigga. That shit sound like. He was, my nigga, that shit sound like. 
a lawnmower or a chainsaw or engine, nigga. What the fuck? I to listen in. They're like, oh, we have to know what's going on. They tapped Burger's calls for two months. Lo and behold, proof was found. Thing is, Burger had rights, so this was tricky at this point. He argued for the courts to throw out the case by arguing his Fourth Amendment rights were exploited. He claimed a mistrial in order to dodge corruption charges, and it worked. New York was on his side at this point, but ultimately the Supreme Court said this was legal, and you are for sure a criminal. See you later, alligator. And then New York was like, I guess, yeah, he's bad. That's, that's a good call, too, I guess. I don't know. Number two, Paul Manafort. You never know when the Russian mob may pop up and just start listening about. Former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort was under investigation under secret court orders. The FBI obtained a warrant to listen in on Manafort's phone calls back in 2014. And then come 2016, the FBI learned about possible ties between Trump associates and the Russian operatives. He was the target of these FBI wiretaps before and after Trump's campaign because under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, the government can secretly wiretap if you can convince a judge that they're possibly agents of a foreign power. So if you ever like, I think John's cheating on me. If he's an agent of a foreign power, just convince somebody, then you can go through his phone. And finally, number one, Squidgy Gate. This one's not so much FBI, but it's pretty juicy. Odds are you haven't heard of it. Let's do it. Lady Diana married Prince Charles on July 29th, 1981. The wedding, of course, was huge. It was televised. It was a flashy whole event. Diana was only 20 at the time. Can you imagine 20 years old? Wow. The pair had two children, Prince William and Prince Harry. The rumors quickly spread about how strong the couple really was behind closed doors. Adultery was rumored on both sides. Finally, come 1996 they divorced diana goes on to do great charitable work but a phone call surfacing from 1992 still has us talking the call was between diana and childhood friend james gilby during this call which went down new year's eve back in 1989 james called diana darling and squidgy those fun little nicknames even confessing his love for her in case we didn't catch that with the whole squidgy nickname diana told them about how her husband made her feel awful and made her life just miserable and then two ham radio operators just happened to hear all of it and then record it all and they sold the tape in 1992 ken wharf who was a former bodyguard of diana he believes the government communications headquarters played the recordings on loop until radio operators had to catch it then they did the deed from there when we think of princess diana this part of her dark history is often overlooked starting off this countdown we have james whitey bulger james joseph bulger jr otherwise known as whitey was an american organized crime boss and fbi informant wanted by the fbi he was the boss of a largely Irish mob in Boston from the 1970s through the 1990s. In the early 2000s, the FBI so actually attended? decided uh -huh. to seek help from a crime show in Germany. <laughs> wait, what? wait, wait. <clears throat> this is too much. This is more than 10. <laughs> they about to give us. Wait, y'all. I guess we watching it. I, I guess. Had them air photos of James and his girlfriend and told people to look out for them, saying that they were extremely dangerous and armed. <laughs> Except there was one problem with that. They didn't double check the pictures that they sent in to be aired. Soon, calls were flooding in saying that they spotted this dangerous couple. However, the photos the FBI chose to broadcast were of his parents harmless retirees so the for the fuck? next couple of days they were doing damage control how embarrassing that's one reason why the fbi wants you to forget about this case in our ninth spot we have the wire fail this next story about the fbi is literally gonna make you facepalm so basically in 2010 brooks kellogg was accused of hiring a hitman to try and murder a co-worker who sued him for 2.5 million dollars so the fbi decided to do a sting operation to get kellogg to confess to his wrongdoing <laughs> So they sent an undercover agent in with a hidden camera and audio equipment. Damn, the only problem boy. is, is that there was a faulty wire. Now, wouldn't you think that they would double, even triple check to make sure that there were no technical issues before sending him in? But they didn't. So it didn't record audio during the confrontation. As a result, he was almost let off the hook. In our eighth spot today, we have the That's fantasy this. tape. In 2008, the FBI was investigating an unsolved murder case when a tape was sent to them. On the tape, it sounded like someone getting tortured. Ultimately, they thought that this tape had to do with the unsolved case that they were working on. Boy, were they wrong, and it's embarrassing. Turns out that the tape actually belonged to a Tennessee judge. His secretary handed it over to the police after she was fired, and uh, it's not of someone being tortured. The judge had made a tape of his sexual fantasies. Apparently, the tape contained, and I quote, graphic, 
erotic situations intertwined with legal dictation made by now former Judge Hagler. Due to the scandal, the judge did resign. How embarrassing for both the judge and the FBI who thought that it was a solid lead. In our seventh spot, we have Damn, Whitey Balger Part 2. So like I mentioned, this guy was an organ- Damn, it's gone. That's crazy. But he probably called back again, bro. He called again. It's, it's over with, man. I figure that I may, I may have to do something for a part two of this, then. So was an informant <clears throat> for the FBI. And the FBI knew that. In fact, they ignored that side of him if he promised to give them information about the inner workings of an Italian-American crime family. There's just a lot of things that they let slide with this guy that they definitely shouldn't have. Plus, one of the reasons why he was on the run in the first place was because his former FBI handler told him that they were coming for him. So he fled and went into hiding for 16 years. Imagine that. Coming in at number six, we have Christine Collins. In 1928, a woman named Christine Collins made headlines after her young son, Walter Collins, went missing. At that time, the FBI was dealing with a number of scandals. So they thought, hey, if we find this woman's missing son, that would look so great on us. In the end, they ended up finding her son and returning him to her. Only problem, it wasn't her son. The FBI was like, nonsense, this is your boy, you're just delusional. So they locked her in a psychiatric ward for 10 days. That's when it was revealed that the boy was indeed not her son. Sadly, her son was actually kidnapped and then murdered in a series of murders known as the Wineville Chicken Coop murders but imagine that like you're crazy lock her up it is her son come on man we are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the beltway snipers these were a series of coordinated shootings that occurred over the course of 20 bruh, days. nah i can't skip that last one bruh that was wow my nigga what the fuck my nigga they bruh the government is tweaking bruh what the fuck, bro? Look at this car. This shit look like, what the fuck, bro? I don't even know what happened. This shit look crazy, bro. They tweak it, bro. We, man, we got to do something about this, bro. What the fuck, bro? October of 2002. Two snipers randomly shot 13 people. 10 sadly died, while three survived but were left in critical condition. One of the victims was FBI intelligence analyst Linda Franklin. <laughs> Fear quickly spread in the area and the FBI was facing immense pressure to catch these guys before more people wound up dead. They were finally caught on October 24th of 2002 when the two men were found sleeping in their car at 3.15 a.m. Three weeks to find cold-blooded killers, it seems kind of short, but the FBI was under tons of public pressure and were heavily scrutinized for not catching them sooner. In our fourth spot, we have the corruption. Yeah, Just a couple of started. years ago, an ex-FBI special agent, Babic Bromund, <laughs> was arrested after it was found that he was accepting bribes linked to an Armenian criminal organization. Not only that, but he was falsifying documents to cover up these bribes. He ended up being charged with three counts of making false statements to a government agency to cover his bribes and one count of conspiracy to commit bribery of a public official. It was found that a lawyer linked to the criminal organization made regular bribe payments to and purchased gifts for Babic while he was an FBI agent working on national security matters. The lawyer apparently bought him a $36,000 motorcycle and paid him $30,000 for a down payment on a second home in Lake Tahoe. All this among other things. In return, Babic would do things for him like diffuse any law enforcement interests in him and he would also search the FBI database and find out what dirt they had on him and others. In our third spot we have Larry Nazar. Back in 2015 news broke that young women a part of the USA gymnastics team were being taken advantage of by gym owners, coaches, and staff. One of them being Larry Nazar. Larry is said to have taken advantage of at least 250 young women since 1992 and apparently the FBI severely severely mishandled this case. For example, in July of 2015, the FBI were first notified about the allegations against Larry. It took them until September 2016 until they started to actually investigate him. By then, 70 more athletes were taken advantage of by him. Not only that, but he was caught lying to the FBI on multiple occasions and they did nothing about that. An attorney for 150 of the women called the FBI out and said, and I quote, when an ordinary American citizen lies to 
the FBI in the course of an investigation, they are prosecuted. Yet no charges have been filed against anyone as a result of this five-year investigation. In our second spot, we have Stoneman Douglas High School. In February of 2018, Nicholas Cruz went into Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland and shot at the students and staff. As a result, 17 people were killed and 17 more were left injured. Well, it turns out that the FBI had received a tip a month prior to the shooting. The tip told the FBI about Cruz's gun ownership, his desire to kill people, his erratic behavior, and even his social media posts, which were disturbing. All the signs of him conducting a school shooting were there and they handed it to the FBI and they basically did nothing. The FBI even admitted that they did not follow proper protocol on this tip. Had they, they might have been able to prevent this from happening. And in our number one spot today, we have Viola Liuzzo. Between 1960 and 1965, an FBI informant, Gary Thomas Rowe, was given the task to infiltrate the coup Plan. He then was to report to the FBI information on the group members and their activities. But he was told not to participate in attacks or violent situations. But he ignored this. In 1965, a white woman named Viola Liuzzo was murdered by this clan. They had fired shots into her car after noticing her passenger was a young black man. Gary was there when it happened and he became an accessory to murder. To make matters worse, the FBI spread rumors that the victim, Viola, was a hair attic, a member of the Communist Party, and that she abandoned her children to have sexual relationships with African Americans involved in the civil rights movement. Meanwhile, she was a civil rights worker that just wanted to help people, and all that stuff was Bruh, just- hold up, hold up, what the fuck? That's not for me, my bad. <clears throat> my nigga. Look at him, bruh. This is looking dumb as hell, bruh. <laughs> Bro. What the fuck? They said she left her children? Bruh. <clears throat> Come on, bruh. That's up by the FBI. Starting off this countdown, we have the double... Wait, hold up. They, they ain't just gonna like... What the fuck? We not about to keep doing this. Because they got way too much. This is not top 10. This is top 30. This is 30 secrets they got, bruh. You want to finish it? Oh, well, I will. I mean, this is 23 minutes. Yeah, man, look. Y'all get this to 20 likes for part two. If y'all want us to finish this, bro. Because, yeah, I'm about done with this right here. They, they, they pissed me off just because they capped me down. Got me recording for two. That last one. Come on, man. Murdered up. Like, what? But yeah, man. Uh, Y'all make sure y'all like this video. Get this to uh, 20 likes for part two. Subscribe if you didn't. You feel me? Uh, Killer Just Me uh, workout channel. Powered Up K. Link, in, link gonna be in the description. Facts. Link gonna be in the description. And, um, you got anything else you wanna say? Free moolah, man. Facts. We'll be on soon. Real soon, man. Real soon. But, uh, other than that, man, we out of here, bro.